By March 1996, Bob Dole and President Clinton had locked up their party's presidential nominations. And while California approached its primary with little fanfare or attention, Democratic Senator J. Billington Bullworth embarked upon the final weekend of his re-election campaign. You promised us federal funding to rebuild our community. What happened? Well, you, you haven't really contributed any money to my campaign, have you? Isn't that obvious? I mean, you don't put down that malt liquor and chicken wings and get behind somebody other than a running back who stabs his wife. You're never going to get rid of somebody like me. That was really good. Yo. Yo, yo, yo to you. Later. I was hoping for sooner. Senator, what is this new strategy? Just tell me a little bit. Ooh, Senator Bulworth. Excuse me, Senator, do you think it's wise to seek the support of the entertainment industry when you have such low opinion of our product? My guys are not stupid. They always put the big Jews on my schedule. Uh, excuse hey. me? Murphy put something bad about Farrakhan in here for you. Let me look. Miss, you be really honest with me and don't spare my feelings. Do you have any more of those little crispy crab cakes? <laughs> Bullworth was a masterpiece, one of those films that didn't garner mass appeal, didn't win a lot of awards, isn't to this day sought after viewing material for new generations seeking to learn about the American political system. All the more distressing that. Maybe if it were viewed in the context of the time and applied to the stunning hogwash and bile we're subjected to every single day from the frauds, phonies, and philanderers in Washington, D.C., we might be able to better understand the mindset, the accumulated arrogance that seeks to bury common sense from podiums across the country. To this day, the movie holds the distinction of being the creative force behind a political inside joke. As recently as 2013, the New York Times reported that President Barack Obama was threatening to go Bullworth. That cathartic need at some point to just spit out the unvarnished truth and let the chips fall where they may. That wonderful, imaginative, thought-provoking, indelible need to simply stop spewing what would normally emanate from the hind end of a steer after a hearty meal and at least try to present something, anything that resembles a smidgen of truth. And at the very least, seeming to even the slightest bit just be a little bit sincere while dishing out the bovine excrement. When I got to work as Secretary of State, I opted for convenience to use my personal email account, which was allowed by the State Department, because I thought it would be easier to carry just one device for my work and for my personal emails instead of two. Looking back, it would have been better if I would simply used a second email account and carried a second phone, but at the time, this didn't seem like an issue. A veteran politician, a former first lady, a former secretary of state, one who's been interwoven in American politics for decades, seeking to cast off any discussion of a possible breaking of law on so many varying fronts by feeding the American public the equivalent of, I would have had everything ready, but the dog ate my homework. Does Hillary Clinton think the American people are just this stupid? Apparently, yes, she does. The vast majority of my work emails went to government employees at their government addresses, which meant they were captured and preserved immediately on the system at the State Department. Except for those that were not sent to government inboxes, the notes that remain in folders on a private server that no one had access to, or those that have already been deleted. Uh, we could play any number of comments from our Tuesday meeting with the press. One of the more smug displays of hubris from another demeaning, pompous, conniving, and colluding American politician who believes they are above the reproach of the menial dirt people they seek to rule over. Look, Hillary Clinton's in a mess of her own making. Nobody did this for her. It speaks once again to political arrogance and a firm belief that you, you are just too stupid to see what's really going on here. Okay, so then, America, let me pose a simple question. How stupid are you? Oh, we're about to start finding out. Oh, and by the way, Mrs. Clinton, just so you know, uh, I have six email accounts on this. It's more than two. I'll be happy to show you how to do it if you'd like. It just takes a little time. But maybe next time. That's my opinion, telling it like it is. Back on True Believers, thanks so much for joining us. Thursday Eve is done. We're back on Thursday. We'll take you right into the weekend and a whole lot more when we continue right here tomorrow on Midpoint.